So this whole assembly is then going to be installed onto here. And then this whole assembly is then going to be installed right onto here. And then that should give us the bulk of our front end being complete. Hey guys, DIY Salvage Guy here, and welcome back to another episode of my channel. On today's episode, we're going to be doing the front end radiator support on my 2012 Audi A7 that was wrecked in a front end collision. So if you guys are new here, make sure you hit that like button below, make sure you subscribe, and turn on those post notifications as well, so that you guys always are up to date on the next iterations of this build. So all my returning viewers and subscribers, thank you so much for coming back here. I really enjoy it, and I'm really happy that you guys are here. Today's episode is going to be basically putting the entire front end together. We're not going to do anything with the bumper or anything, but everything that goes around that. So what we have to do is we have to take the radiator support and we have to connect a bunch of brackets, bolts, and all that stuff so that we can get it onto the car. Then we're going to take the radiator itself, we're going to attach the condenser to it, we're going to connect the lower radiator as well, and we're going to slide all that in as well. So we're going to have a large majority of the front end all completed today, and that way the only things that we need to do are the headlights, and a lot of the bodywork on the bumper as well. And then we will be more or less moving towards completion of this vehicle. I'm hoping that I have everything that I need. Hopefully that I did my research properly and I should have everything. So we're gonna be able to get the cooling system all up and running, uh, flush it out, make sure everything's good, make sure there's no leaks and basically just get this car to where I would be able to drive it except for any cosmetic issues or anything like that. So today's a big day, very excited to get started. So here we go. So this is the first diagram that I use. It shows a radiator support and a bunch of the brackets and bolts that go along with it. So I ordered a bunch of the stuff that's on the screen and then I found this other diagram that shows a large majority of the bolts and the brackets that I was missing. So this video took a little bit longer in order to create in order to get it to be able to be assembled. Alright guys, so today assembly is starting. So we'll take one last look at the car as it is right now. We'll be doing the radiator support, the radiator, the cooling system, we'll get the AC all hooked up and everything, and we should be able to have everything up and running except for the actual uh, bumper itself. Time to get this thing up and running. So the first stop in this is going to be com uh, combining the front end bumper support to the radiator support. So we're going to do that, then we're going to put the radiator support on the actual car itself. So we're going to be putting on the front bumper reinforcement now. So we have this at both sides and we have the actual bumper reinforcement itself. So we'll just cut this off 
And what we have to do is we have to actually make sure that it goes on to the radiator support. So these are going to bolt on like so. Something to that effect. We'll do it on both sides just to make sure. We'll bolt on something like that, and then we'll put this right onto here. Alright guys, so you can see that the radiator support is mounted to the bumper uh, supports right now pretty well. Um, put all the screws in, so this isn't going anywhere. Next step that we have to do is put the actual radiator support onto the vehicle itself. I'm going to use the bolts that it came with. Um, so, <clears throat> came in the, the kit that I have. So, we're just going to move some of these hoses out of the way. And we're going to get this supported up here. And then everything should start coming together after that. Alright guys, so I just want to give you a bit of an update on this and you've been watching me with the time lapse, but so I was able to get everything on here, just basically just going over everything. So um you might have seen these little bottom parts gave me a little bit of trouble. I didn't exactly know how the insulators went, so trial and error finally figured it out. So that's all good. Got this all done. Used a little bit of um a little bit of bearing grease on the plastic itself, a very tiny bit, and was able to slide these right in. Um, so everything's good here. Then you have the radiator uh, fan support right here. You guys could see that. This is pretty much the most expensive part of the vehicle. Um, new, these things are going for like $1,600. Then you have the fan assembly. Each one of these fans is like $1,600. So um, definitely recommend going for a junk jar or something like that. Um, so back to the radiator support itself, um, took a lot of trial and error. The bolts that I actually ordered for this thing, um, for the bracket were not correct. So the dealer said that that was them, but they gave me 35 millimeter bolts and those are not suitable. So I wound up using 20 millimeters and sourced them from Home Depot. I wasn't going to go through the dealer again, um, too, too much of a hassle. So. Um, and also wanted to just point out on this, I wound up using a, um, a bolt on this instead. 
Not sure if you can see that in there. The recommended aspect of it is a rivet, but I didn't have a rivet gun. So I used a bolt, a uh, 16 millimeter, and it was able to hold on, and so everything was good. So got the support on here, everything's good, the brackets are good. Have these little, um, little adjusters, I guess. These things are super expensive, they're like $30 each, so I was very happy that they came with it. Got the um, hood support locked on, so that's all good. And both sides are pretty much done. So the next thing I'm going to do is get this information or get all this onto the actual support itself. Um, well, once I'm done with this, so I guess the next thing I need to do is put on the actual uh, lower radiator, and we'll go from there. So next thing I'm going to be installing is these horns. You have on an Audi, you have a right side and a left side horn for the high notes and the low notes. This is the one that actually came off the vehicle, the one in my left hand right here. Um, you can tell with the bracket, it has a little uh, little mounting point right here. And the screw also threads into the bracket itself. I got this one from a junkyard. It said it was for an A7, um, but it's not. It's for an A6. Everything is pretty much the same except the mounting points. So there's no little tab to kind of go in here and but everything else is the same everything else fits the horn part number is the same so we're just going to uh use a, a nut and bolt and we should be able to mount that pretty easily Alright guys, so I mounted all of the um, items that need to be on the radiator support itself. So we have the actual radiator support, we have the hood latches, we have the headlight brackets, we have this little bracket thing that I don't really know what it's for or what it's called right now, but I have that. Then we have the horn bracket, we have the vacuum pump bracket, um, we got our mounting screws for the radiator itself, and then we have the reciprocal of everything else on the other side as well. So. Like I said, this thing was a little bit of a different part number, but it um, wound up being just fine. I was able to mount it with just a nut and bolt, tightened it up, and it's not moving. So we are good with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on the actual radiator right now. Um, you saw that yesterday that the radiator is all mounted up with the... Um, the fan on it, got all the grommets and everything on there, so we should be able to slide that in. I need to see what's going to be easiest if I should put the lower radiator on or the condenser all at once before I start actually installing anything, but that's going to be uh, the next step in this process. All right, so made a mistake. Should not have used a impact gun in order to torque up this bolt. Lesson learned, we'll not be doing that again, but the downside is, is that I need to order another one, so I just ordered that from the local Volkswagen dealership. Thankfully, um, they're still open. This is all going on during the coronavirus pandemic. So, um, yeah, it's one of those weird type of bolts. So hopefully I can um, drill that out and get another one. So $1.74, stupid little amount of money, but made a mistake, lesson learned. Alright guys, so quick update, mounted the lower radiator to the center radiator, so you can see that kind of just slides right into those, um, those little brackets right here, pushes right in nice and easy. Um, so I was able to drill out that bolt, uh, let's see if you can see that, so I was able to drill that out right in here, and so I ordered a new one, it will be here on Monday, so I'm going to go ahead and continue on with the install because that should be a nice easy thing to just do on, uh, put on, um, should be very easy. So then I went ahead and installed the air conditioning condenser. So that just slides right in here as well. So everything on here is good. Next thing we're gonna do is install these air baffles. I guess they just channel the air right in here. So these should slide right into here. And 
just to show you guys a completed product. I believe these sit just right in here. And they're going to channel the air right into the uh, all the radiators and the AC condenser. Right here as well. Got the room for the uh, AC hose. So this whole assembly is then going to be installed onto here. And then this whole assembly is then going to be installed right onto here. And then that should give us the bulk of our front end being complete. Alright guys, so the next step in this process is going to be to mount the actual radiator support um, onto the vehicle itself. So we're going to be taking this and we're going to be putting it onto here. We should have all our bolts and everything, so we should be good with all that. Um, we're going to attach the hood latch cable and all that stuff. Then we're going to get to the actual um, radiator and all that as well. I do need to figure out where this uh, seal strip goes. Um, there's no easy uh, diagram or anything that shows any of that. So if anyone knows where this goes on the Audi A7, please let me know. So we got the radiator support mounted to the body. Um, we torqued up all the bolts. So you have the three bolts here, here and down below, and then also up here. So did that on both sides. But the problem that I'm having right now um, is that the hood is not actually closing. So I was hoping that the, the alignment of the hood was still gonna be good, but clearly um, you can tell that it's not. So you can see right in there, it's. It's not off by a lot, but it's enough. So it's off by about uh, maybe half a centimeter. So I need to adjust some of the brackets. As you can see right in there. Um, so I'm gonna try to do a, a hood adjustment. I thought that I handled this already, uh, but without the actual hood hinges or anything like that, or the hood latches, I couldn't be sure. So I'm gonna have to try to do some adjustments on that and see if we can get it to close. All right, so we were able to get the hood to actually close and latch down to the, uh, to the support. The hood is badly buckled, so I know that the, the adjustments are off. I have about I have about a centimeter uh, body gap right now. I'm hoping that I can um, pull out these dents while it's latched into the hood support, the radiator support, and then reshape the hood by taking it off and kind of just putting it on the floor, trying to hammer it out a little bit. I'm thinking I'm probably going to need a new hood, but before I spend at least $1,000 on a new or used hood, I'm going to do everything I can to try to get this out. So, Thanks, so it works, it latches in, works good. So, at least I know that this is pretty secure, pretty stable. So, I'm going to go ahead and install the um, the radiator and all that stuff as well. Alright guys, so I have the radiator mounted up. It really is amazing just how everything just lines up perfectly. The engineering on, I guess not only this car, but every car in general is, it's phenomenal. So, you have the, the fan that goes on the other side of the radiator, as I showed you guys before. Let's see. So right in there, you have the fan. Then you have your radiator itself. You got your AC condenser right in here. Then you have your lower radiator. You got these air baffles. This AC hose is going to connect right up into here. Get a bolt right through there. And we have this other hose down here going to the lower radiator. Then we have the other AC hose. So everything's coming together real nice. Um, then we have to do some headlights, install those, get the bumper um, going with all the body work and everything that we have to do for that. 
then we'll have to do the the hood um, but more or less guys this stuff is all coming along pretty nicely hey guys so yesterday you saw the radiator support and all the assembly up on the vehicle but i actually had to take it off because i noticed that the bleeder screw on the lower radiator hose was actually missing so what this does is it um you basically just disconnect this and it allows all of the fluid to come out for a nice quick coolant change called the dealership they told me that i needed to get the entire radiator hose for 130 dollars stupidly so um after some research, uh, scouring some forums, finally found out what the thread pitch was of it. Um, so went to Advanced Auto Parts, uh, or went to their website, and found this little guy, uh, 902-404. This is the bleed screw. Um, it's from Dorman. So they basically, it was an exact fit, went right in there. So use your resources, guys. Don't, don't listen to the dealerships when they tell you that you have to spend X amount on these little tiny things. Um, you know, there's other people that lose these things all the time. So use your resources. Um, Audis are expensive, just like any other German car right now, but they don't have to be as expensive as the dealerships make them out to be. That's going to do it for today's episode, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys are new here, make sure you hit that like button down below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you post notifications are on. And to everyone who keeps coming back here, thank you so much for being back here. In today's episode, you saw me basically go over the entire front end assembly. You saw some frustrating processes with it. I didn't have the opportunity to take this vehicle apart, so I missed out on a lot of that uh, learning process and basically how it goes together. So I used a couple of my resources and I made sure that I had diagrams and I did not rush with this. This process took about a week in order to do. I was missing some parts, I had to order some things, I broke a bolt, and all these things are part of the learning process. So now next time when I go to do another build, I'm going to have a large data set in my mind in order to basically just be able to hit this a little better. So don't be intimidated by these types of things guys. Make sure you guys just get out there, just start wrenching, and make sure that you are just trying to have fun with this process because that's all it is. As long as you don't rush with it and you have the time to kill with it. It's a lot of fun. So thank you so much for being here, guys. Hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, make sure your post notifications are on. And most importantly to me, throw me some comments, interact with me. Let me know what you guys think about these builds. You want to see something else? Tell me what you guys want to see for the next build. Let me know what you guys want to see and what makes you guys keep coming back here. Thank you so much. DIY Salvage Guy here, and I hope that I can be an inspiration to you guys and continue the knowledge transfer for all of this stuff. You guys learn from my mistakes and we just learn as we go with this guys so i hope that you guys will gain enough experience and knowledge and maybe just a bit of motivation so that you guys will try to become a diy salvage guy yourself